Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's class on sketching basic body proportions. Uh, this is a, a free class, uh, obviously. Um, we've had some other classes like this before that have been uh, premium classes, but um, since this one is free, you can find it uh, by referencing it back on YouTube later. And um, so the class recording will be posted tomorrow on uh, YouTube as well as on the, the Michaels website. And uh, we have several other classes coming up this month that relate to what we're doing tonight on uh, body proportions. So uh, we've got tonight's class where we'll be sketching the basic body proportions of a model using the reference image that was included in uh, the supply list. And then uh, in next week's class, we will be sketching the same model using reference photos that uh, will be provided. And uh, we'll be sketching this figure in a crouching position. And we'll be doing it very similar to how we're doing tonight, where we're finding the basic body proportions and uh, you know, kind of muscle structure and everything, but we won't go much further than that in next week's class because there will be so much to cover with that figure in a crouching position. So in the following week, we will add value to that sketch uh, using graphite pencils and build on what we're doing in uh, next week's class. Over the next uh, three weeks, we'll be using the same reference photo. And then in the third class at the end of July, we will add uh, watercolor to this crouching figure, uh, uh, this photograph of the model that is will be provided. And um, we'll be adding watercolor using one color from the Viviva color sheet packs that are, are sold at Michael's. And this will be a premium class. So uh, the next two classes are free in addition to uh, this class tonight. And we'll be sketching that figure in a crouching position, adding the value shapes to it so we know where all the shadows need to go with uh, the watercolor. And then in that third premium class at the end of the month, then uh, we'll add watercolor to it. So you can see the stages of this, this painting and uh, sketch if you, you know, sign up for the, the class next week and the following week because I, I took progression photos as I was working through this, uh, this little painting. And so, you know, obviously I don't have them anymore because I covered them up, but you know, you can see the photo references that show how it, how it will look as we build on that. So hopefully everyone who's attending tonight's class can come to uh, the next couple of weeks or check out the recordings on YouTube so you can uh, continue studying uh, the figure in different positions. So tonight we're gonna be doing just a very basic uh, head-on uh, stance of this model in uh, this reference photo that was provided to you. I have it on my iPad as well, but I have the uh, printout didn't turn out so well. So I'm gonna be using the image on uh, the iPad. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my tabletop view and go over supplies and we will get started. Okay, so uh, you may have something that might resemble this by the end of class, but always like to manage expectations and say that it depends on your skill level and how you know quickly you can follow along with what we're doing and how much you may be able to add uh, extra to, um, to this drawing. But that's what we're aiming for. I'm using the Stettler uh, pencils here, graphite pencils. You're gonna want some nice light pencils like a 2H or a 4H and then maybe a 2B or 4B to add some value if we have time. I'm using a uh, Faber-Castell synthetic eraser here. I've got this Westcott ruler. And then I have a pretty large sketchbook uh, by Canson. I'm gonna leave it open to where it is, but it's the 11 by 14 uh, mixed media pad. And that's mostly just cause it's a, a larger uh, piece of paper. Um, next week, just to let you know what I'm using for the, the free class next week, you can keep going with this mixed media paper because you can add uh, watercolor to this. So that was the other reason I wanted to start us out with mixed media at the beginning of this month, uh, mixed media paper that is. But 
Uh, next week, I'm going to be using the Strathmore watercolor uh, paper pad, and it's got some nice thicker paper that can handle a lot of water. So if you um, wanted to keep going with the mixed media paper, you can, but that's what I'll be using next week, and it's in the supply list. So anyway, and then don't forget to tag your work with those hashtags, make it with Michael's, Michael's classes. You can follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art. I'm also on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art, and here's a couple of my business cards. I'm always flashing on screen, and I think that's all of the supplies except for that photo, so which I already held up a second ago. You can have the, it printed out or the digital version. I'm going to be using the digital version myself just because my printout didn't turn out so so well. Any questions about supplies before we get started? No questions so far. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, one more thing I just wanted to add. Um, if you follow me on uh, Instagram in my link tree, I have, and Chanel can actually drop my link tree in the chat as well if she hasn't already. Um, if you go to that link tree, I've got a ton of links there. You can find uh, the next classes with Michael's easily there. I've got a tab for that. If you're in Austin, you might sign up for some in-person classes that I have coming up at the Contemporary Austin uh, Art School at Laguna Gloria. And then also I have some openings right now for private lessons. So uh, you can sign up for a, um, you can very easily sign up to for like a 15 minute consultation to talk about your goals if you're interested in private lessons and uh or you can just go ahead and book a, a 60 minute appointment for a private lesson with me and you can put directly in there it'll it's all linked to my google calendar so the openings that i have in my schedule are easy to sync up with and Okay, so I just wanted to plug that since I have some openings right now on my schedule for, for private lesson students. And I'd love to um, get some folks in there. I'm also accepting commissions right now, which is something I haven't done in a while. And I do a lot of portrait commissions. So I've got all that posted on my Instagram if you're interested. And I'll stop being a commercial for myself now. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is grab this uh, photograph and a piece of scrap paper. So you can just tear a piece of paper out of your uh, sketchbook. If you have a post-it note, that would be perfect. But we're going to make a little ruler for ourselves. And if you want to use a ruler to do this instead of a post-it note, you are welcome to. Um, you can just grab your ruler and you can just measure with your ruler as we're doing this. But uh, I'm going to use a post-it note because I find that this is very helpful for me. And what we are measuring is head lengths. So if you were just brand new to all of these Michaels classes with me and you haven't attended any of these classes before, there's a couple of classes you might check out or if you're brand new to figure drawing and this is your first time drawing the figure, there's uh, several classes that we've done on this topic um, using references of a model that I, I took last year, a female model. And um, now we're, we're gonna go through another series using these images of a male model. Uh, but we did before that, we used the wooden mannequin to do a class on uh, basic body proportions and capturing movement. And then we did a gesture sketch class. So Chanel just dropped the links to those classes in the chat right now. And if you're watching later on YouTube, you can just search uh, basic body proportions and capturing uh, movement or uh, the, yeah, the gesture sketch was the, the keywords in, in that other one, gesture sketching in graphite. And we're gonna do just a tiny bit of that in just a moment to warm up um, as we get started here. But first I just wanna talk about the how we measure the proportions of the body really quick for those of us who are, are just brand new to this. So we there's no such thing as the perfectly proportioned body. Uh, we are all, 
you know, unique individuals who have our own proportions. And so there's no, you know, one standard body that we say, you know, we measure all other bodies against that body. We use the head uh, and then we measure the head lengths of the body that we are studying and sketching. So, and we, if there was a standard, which there isn't, it's funny, I had a, was teaching a class to middle school age students recently here in town. I'm going to switch to my forward facing while I'm just talking here about the uh, body proportions. And I had a very clever student who was, you know, 13, 14 years old, because man, 13, 14 year olds will put you in your place. And I was like, there's no standard. And then I held up the, you know, the little wooden mannequin and they're like, uh, isn't that the standard right there? And I'm like, well, you know, we have to have something to, you know, to, to try to grasp this. And so, yeah, technically you could think of this as the standard and you could measure, you know, how everyone else deviates from it, but it, it's really not like anybody saying, you know, that a human being needs to be this, this kind of proportions and that, you know, everybody's deviating from that. So no, there is no standard, but that clever kid put me in my place. Um, but when we look at a mannequin, they do tend to have what I like to call supermodel proportions and they tend to be eight of their heads tall. So uh, this mannequin is eight of its heads tall. The average human being is anywhere between five to eight of their heads tall. Um, just for uh, your information, I'm six and a half of my heads tall. My partner is six and a half of his heads tall, but he's a full you know, head taller than me. Um, I'm five, five and a half. He's 5'10". Um, I have a good friend who I used to share clothes with because she was the same height as me and we weighed about the same. Um, we wore the same shoe size, but we could not share clothes. And that was because her torso was much longer than mine and her legs were a lot shorter, whereas I have very long legs and a short torso. So a dress that fit her you know, around the waist in a certain spot is going to hit a different uh, spot on my waist because I have such a short torso compared to her long torso. So being the same height as somebody doesn't mean that you say, have the same body proportions. It all uh, boils down to how many heads tall you are. And then we use those heads to measure the, the rest of the length of the body. Okay, so I'm going to switch back now that I'm done with that little spiel. And my children have taken over this iPad, so got this cutesy little screensaver on it now. Okay, so let's find out how tall our model uh, Demetrius is here. So this is Demetrius, who just happens to be the partner of the female model that we drew last year, Sion. They're the most adorable couple, and they both uh, have done a lot of life drawing here around uh, town and we're both so lovely to be my models for these photo shoots. Um, anyway, okay, so Demetrius's head, I'm gonna use my, you can use your ruler or you can get a post-it and just measure from the crown of the head to the chin. If I were to balance a book on the top of Demetrius's head, it's not gonna be on his forehead. It's not gonna be, you know, at the top of the face, it's gonna be way up here at the top of the head. So we're measuring, from the crown of the head to the chin. And then I'm just gonna draw, a, you're gonna draw a little tick mark here on your post-it note or your scrap paper to see how uh, the length of the head is, okay? And then we're gonna take that and we're gonna go from the chin and uh, measure how far it is from the chin to the next head length. And on most people that tends to fall at the highest point on the breastplate or uh, on the nipple line, but uh, you know, there is no standard. So on Demetrius, it happens to be right about at, um, it's above his nipple line. So it is right about there. 
So not quite at the, the line of the armpit, but somewhere in between there. And you can see that in your photo. And if you have a printout, you can draw directly on your photo or you can do what I'm doing and just you know place your pencil at that spot to keep measuring. Okay, from the, uh, the bottom of the second head link to the third head link, we're gonna see where that falls and it falls right at his belly button, which is very helpful because uh, several other things tend to line up on most people. And I've yet to see someone that didn't have this where the elbows tend to be in line with the belly button. And just like when we've talked about facial proportions, I'm always gonna use words like tend to, approximately, typically, thereabouts, you know, usually, mostly, because there is no standard, right? Okay, so at the third head length, we've got the belly button, and don't worry, I've got this all. If you're forgetting as we're going here, I've got it all marked down on my paper already. And then from the third head length to uh, the bottom of the fourth head length is, oh geez, right in uh, the center of the crotch, which also happens to be in line with the wrist joints, so that's important. Okay. So the wrist joints are right at the bottom of that fourth head length. And like I said, I've got this all written down so we can come back to it easily if you're getting lost. Uh, and then from the bottom of the fourth head length, so right at those wrist joints, the bottom of the uh, fifth head length is just above the kneecap. And then from the fifth head length to the sixth, we've got about halfway uh, down the calf. And then uh, to the seventh head length is right there at the ankle bone. So Demetrius is just over uh, seven heads of his heads tall. Okay, and uh, I think he is, boy, he is very tall. Uh, when I was photographing him in my studio, my studio is not super uh, big. So I had to stand way in the corner to try to get this photograph, to try to get his full, um, you know, height from uh, toe to head in the screen without getting, you know, around the, the back of my backdrop coming in there, which is why I basically just edited out the background because it was really hard to, uh, you know, I had a backdrop, but where I had to stand to get his full height in there was, was tricky and not to have like the back of my studio showing. Anyway, okay, so what I want you to do next is take your post-it note or your ruler if you were using your ruler and whatever that length was on your ruler or whatever that length was on your post-it note. We are just gonna go down the side of our paper here and draw that length of, we're gonna just you know measure out what seven and some change head lengths would look like. And I went ahead and just drew eight head lengths and I'm just going to darken my lines with a heavier pencil. If you want to use an H pencil as you go so that your lines are easy to erase, that would be ideal. Okay, so I went ahead and down here at the bottom, I went ahead and just measured out what the eighth head length would be. And then I went back to the uh, photograph and I measured from the ankle, from the ankle to see like how much farther it went from his ankle to the, you know, how much space there was. And you can, again, you can use your ruler or you can just eyeball it and just sketch, you know, where the tip of his toes stopped and then how much further it would be to that eighth head length. So we're not going for absolute perfection today. Anyway, we're looking for, you know, just a basic understanding. So we have measured out what seven and a half ish a little more than seven and a half, I would say. So he's approaching eight uh, of his heads tall. 
Okay, and then we'll just number those down the side. Six, seven. Okay, and then we will go down and we'll make a little measurement for where all those other important uh, markings were on the body. Okay, so the nipple line was just below that, that second head length, right? So you can go ahead and you can put bottom of chin, crown of head, Um, at the third uh, head length, we had the belly button. At the bottom of the third head length, at the bottom of the fourth head length, we had the crotch, or we can say the wrist joints. I don't honestly remember how I did this on the, <laughs> the other one. I can go back and look, but these are what we identified today. So not everything is falling in line with the head links, but we're just measuring these other, you know, kind of landmarks on the, the body to, to help find our place. Okay. And then we had just above the knee for the fifth uh, head length. So just below that uh, fifth head length, you can put knees kneecaps. Okay, and then, I mean, I guess if it helps to measure like the middle or the widest part of the calf, you could put that somewhere in between the sixth and the seventh head length. And then we had the ankles in line with the bottom of the seventh head length. Okay, so as we're sketching our uh, stick figure here, next, uh, you want to try to uh, line these things up on the stick figure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch a stick figure. But before that, so actually the second thing we're going to do is I want to warm up just a little bit. Let me see, we're at 25 minutes in. I want to do a little warm up, but there's a lot to cover before this. Okay, so sketching a figure, if you, you know, haven't uh, sketched a figure before and uh, that class that I mentioned on sketching the wooden mannequin, we covered this bodies in movement. I talked a lot about in that class how to capture weight in a figure and that being the, the next important thing, I think, to capturing uh, movement in uh, a gesture sketch, which we'll, we'll definitely get to sketching some gestures with Demetrius as our model uh, as we go forward, you know, using these reference photos, but you can also refer back to the, the class on gesture sketching and graphite with Sion as the model. And uh, in that class, we also uh, covered, you know, a lot of the same stuff. So I'm just going to do a mini version of that real quick to warm up because anytime we draw a figure, it's so hard to get away from making everything look really stiff. And it definitely doesn't help with this particular image that we're looking at a figure uh, that is standing in a very stiff uh, sort of posture right now. But just because uh, he's standing in a way that, you know, feels not like there's not a lot of movement, the figure is a very fluid thing that has weight and movement, even if the figure is just standing uh, straight, you know, doing like mountain pose and uh, yoga. If you do any yoga when you're doing mountain pose, there's a very big awareness around where your weight and your body is established and that it's very evenly distributed. So we could think about the weight in that way. But to warm up, anyway, I don't want to go too far into that. I want you to just do some figure eights. So we want to just be fluid. We want to be soft. We want to be like a figure as we're drawing a figure. So we want things to be nice and fluid and soft, okay? And then the other thing I wanna do is a blind contour real quick to warm up. So we're going to just look at the photo of Demetrius and we're gonna try not to look at our paper. And if it helps, you can turn your body in your chair away from uh, the away from your desk and you know face the the photograph like this so I'll do that 
now I'm just going to show you so that I'm not tempted to glance and look down too much. And I'm really just relying on my muscle memory in my hand and the direct communication from my eyes that are looking at the photograph to my hand that is doing the drawing. And without any instruction here, we're just gonna sketch the figure. So I want you to try to just capture all of the shapes, like think about that wooden mannequin, all of those shapes that make up the figure and it might get kind of wonky. Try not to pick up your pencil. And it's going to look crazy. And that's good. Okay. The idea is that we are just looking and we're loosening up. So do another one of those. So I'm looking at the shape of the head, looking at the roundness of the neck. I'm looking at the broadness of the shoulders, the shapes that make up the shoulders, the cylindrical shape of the torso, just really moving down in a way that translates to the three dimensions of this form. So think cylinders, think spheres, think you know, things that have a weight. Okay. I'm feeling some weight in, in that sketch. Hopefully you're feeling that in yours as well. Okay, so even a stick figure can have weight and a movement. All right, and then the first thing we're gonna do now is just start with that, that stick figure shape. So I know I've already drawn the, the figure here and maybe you can see it on screen or not. I'm just gonna be darkening uh, what I've already done here. So we're gonna start with an egg shape for the head and you want to try to get that egg shape within the length that you established for for the head and it might be more of an oval you also might start with a circle and then draw a little half oval off the bottom of that because that can really help to get the egg shape to happen okay and then from there we're not trying to get to the, the nipple line at the bottom of the second head length. We're trying to get just like just below the armpit line. Okay, so the way that, uh, oh wait, sorry. We're doing the stick figure first. Uh -huh. Forget that. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do, we're gonna start with uh, these little circles for the joints. So we're gonna go ahead and think about the neck as a circle, thinking about the shapes on the, the wooden mannequin as well. And then we're gonna connect this with more of like some stick figure lines in just a second. So we'll go ahead and put a circle there for the neck and then a couple of circles for the shoulders. So we're turning Demetrius first into a wooden shape model. And then we'll, we'll look at uh, the shapes of his actual form next. Okay, so and then we can just go ahead and do one line down the center, a vertical line down the center of the figure, but then we're going to deviate right here and do, oops, hang on. we're going to do the hip joints and then we're going to connect the hip joints with a straight line right there and then have straight lines coming out for the legs and then we want to get our well let's go back up here to the arms first we want our elbow joints to be in line with the belly button so we put those at the bottom of the third head length so we've got the shoulders and you know hopefully you're drawing lightly so that your uh, lines can be erased and we'll do a little triangle here to connect the neck ball that we drew to the uh, shoulder circles that we drew and then we'll just have another straight line coming down from the shoulders to the elbow uh, circles and then we'll have some circles for the wrist joints and we'll connect those with some straight lines. 
Okay. And then we've got these circles for the knees. And then we've got these circles for the ankles. I'm going to make sure all of these circles are lining up with these measurements that you established on your you know, when we drew our little, our measurement links over here to the side. Okay, and then for the hands, we're just going to start out with just a little shape like that. You know, thinking about just the line that might represent this shape on the wooden mannequin. And if you want to even go ahead and start to draw that shape in, you can. Just like the shape that we see on the wooden mannequin. You can go ahead and start to fill in all the rest of this as well. And again, don't worry about what the actual figure looks like just yet. We're just thinking about the wooden mannequin shapes. So starting with some very basic shapes. Okay, so thinking about that, we can go ahead and put our uh, torso shape in for the mannequin. And we're just double checking against these measurements here on the side to see if things appear lined up in the, the right way. And then we'll go back and refer to uh, Demetrius himself and the shapes that we're seeing on his particular form in just a moment. Okay, so for the torso, we've got that. Oh, yeah, that's why I was second guessing myself there. I drew the the joints for the, the hip joints a little high there. Okay, so we've got the bottom of the torso uh, right about there. And then we're do the, the wrist or the, the hip joints like at the top of the legs. That looks a little short to me. I made the legs a little short. Let me see. All right, see I'm getting I'm confusing myself looking at the wooden mannequin versus Demetrius. Um, okay, right. His crotch was right about in line with the bottom of the, the fourth head length. So more like that. That looks better. All right, maybe the legs need to be a little longer, but I'll I'll admit we are drawing, we're trying to draw a figure's hip joints and, and all that stuff, but we're, we're looking at a pair of gym shorts, you know, in this photograph. So it's kind of tricky to get like exact measurements of uh, muscle, muscle structure, you know, when we're, we're looking at a pair of uh, swim shorts or gym shorts here, but we're doing our best. Okay, so back to Demetrius says proportions himself here. So we've got all these basic proportions in here. We can go ahead and put like the shape of the foot and make that hit that line at the bottom of that uh, not quite a little over seven and a half, right? Okay, are there any questions so far? I feel like everybody's been super silent in the, the chat tonight. Yep, we have a very quiet, small group today. Oh, okay. Well, that's a bummer. There were so many signups. I didn't even look to see how many. I am wondering if um, the weather might be affecting some things. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because it an, it's an odd small class today how many people do we have i can't like for some reason it's not letting me do the drop down um i'm showing that we have three people oh my god we had like 600 signups that's crazy I'm yeah so, so either either is something with the link was there's an issue with the link or a lot of people are having um uh -huh. some bad weather right now that's a bummer. I wonder, you know what? I 
realized at the beginning of when I tried to log into the class, it asked me for the password, which is the same as it always is. Michael's one, is that always included in the registration? I wonder, because it usually does not prompt me to put in the password. Um, I think so, but I don't know. I don't normally log in that way. Okay. Well, I'm, I bet that could, could be a factor. Okay, well that explains why everybody's so quiet. There's only a few of you. Okay, well feel free to speak up. We've got like a free premium class going right now for a small group. Um, okay, yeah, it looks like Jack and Demina or Demina, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, feel free to speak up if you got any, any questions about proportions here. Um, all right, well, I'm going to go back to the uh, other sketch of Demetrius that I included when uh, advertising the class to talk about adding the, uh, you know, just muscles and, and things like that and the value and the way that I like to uh, start to render a figure is really, I mean, everything in all of these classes that I do it, drawing any subject, it's always what the light is doing. So uh, once you have that basic form sketched out, uh, you can go back on top of that. And I drew so dark with my pencil on that other one, I'm afraid if I go back and try to erase all the just shapes that we did, you can start to build on those shapes and that's exactly how I drew this. So I started with a very light pencil and I sketched in all of those shapes and I drew so lightly with my H pencil that I could easily erase those circles for the shoulders and erase the circles for the elbows, et cetera. And, you know, erased all of that. And then on top of that started to look at what the light was doing. So I'm just going to kind of go back in on top of this drawing here and uh, show you what light was jumping out at me in this photograph. And this is also how we're gonna approach that uh, crouching figure uh, image that uh, we'll be drawing over the next few weeks is really using the, the value to, to find our way around that. And then, uh, and then obviously the, the proportions themselves and where all of these, uh, joints line up. So when we're looking at a figure like this, it's it's very unlikely that if you're drawing a model in a life drawing class that they're going to just be standing like this. Normally during the gesture poses, they're going to be doing something very activated and you can, you know, reference that gesture class that we talked about and drop the link in the chat. Uh, something that's got a lot of very dynamic poses and movement. And then for uh, the later poses in a life drawing class, the model will sit in a very uh, comfortable seated way or maybe standing, but usually they're going to be uh, putting their weight on something like maybe leaning on um, a stick, like a broomstick. Um, a lot of models will lean on something like that to distribute their weight. Um, but most of the time they're not going to be standing just fully uh, straight on like this, there's going to be some movement and some positioning of the arms and limbs that are going to deviate. So it's going to be hard to go back and, you know, just like measure all the way down with the head links because things are going to be bent and, um, you know, distributed in a, a different way, or you're going to have foreshortening, which is like if a finger is pointed directly at you, like right now, all you can see is the very tip of my finger. Um, and you can see a little bit of like this shape right here. And you can see the bottom of the finger here. But this entire length of the finger is is missing from your view. And so rather than trying to imagine and draw that part of the finger that you don't see, what you want to do is you want to draw only what is visible to you. So in the next couple of weeks with that crouching figure, we're going to definitely have to do some foreshortening, uh, like specifically with this knee right here. There's a lot of foreshortening happening with this entire leg. The bottom of the leg is tucked under here. So we're only seeing 
the, the top of the leg and the knee. We're not seeing, um, you know, that entire foot. And what you want to do in instances of this, and we'll obviously get to this next week, but you want to think about these basic proportions that we're talking about tonight. And you want to see, you know, if these things would line up, um, like where's the elbow? Is it anywhere close to the belly button? <laughs> you know, if, if the elbow is like way over here or like too far up, you know, it's like, well, that doesn't make sense, you know? So you wanna think about what makes sense as far as these lengths and, you know, how these things uh, would line up if the figure was standing, you know, just straight up and down like this and taking into account that particular models uh, body proportions and uh, head lengths, et cetera. So, uh, but we'll get to this particular shape that the, the figure is in next week when we, we sketch that one. Um, but just wanted to point out that we're, we're drawing a very, you know, nothing's foreshortened, everything's pretty standard and, and straight up and down here. Okay, so once you've got those basic shapes in and then you've erased your uh, wooden mannequin shapes and started to put in more of the shape of the torso that you're seeing on Demetrius. So we can start to look a little more closely at the outlines of the form and get the, the shape of his torso in there and um, you know start to, to build on all of that. Then we can look at the value. So I'm looking at this big shadow on the side of the face. And then the shadow that's being cast from the head across the neck. And then the shadow uh, that I'm seeing here in the, the collarbone. And then I like to use a diagonal hatching line to fill in that value shadow and then across the side the uh, Demetrius's right side our left looking at him his uh, his right arm there's a very heavy shadow all the way down the side of the arm and if you're having trouble getting the shapes of the muscle forms in there in just such a short class tonight with so much to cover um, it's hard to, to go into the details of all of that. So my hack and my trick for you to be able to render these shapes is to look for what the light is doing. So maybe even if you're just at the stick figure version of this, start to draw these shadows on top of your stick figure. And if your stick figure is nice and light, it should be able, should be easy to just sketch these shadows on top of it and then erase the stick figure underneath. And I've just learned the hard way over uh, the two years almost uh, of T or yeah, we're at the two year mark. I started in July, uh, 2021 doing these classes. If I draw with a light pencil and try to model drawing lightly for you, you will not see it. It will not show up on the Zoom screen. So unfortunately with something like this, it's like just, I've learned it's in my best interest to just jump to where I'm I'm drawing the dark shadows. Otherwise, um, it's going to be a lot of me drawing something that nobody can see on the screen. So you'll have your light um, stick figure drawing with all those shapes, and then you're sketching these value shapes on top of it. And then go very general to specific. So this is just you know a basic body proportion study here. So don't worry about you know, it being perfect and more just try to capture the the main proportions, which we already did, and then the, the shapes of the light on top of that. And when it comes to everything below the belly button and uh, above the kneecap here, we've got mostly just the shape of these gym shorts uh, to go for um, in these classes. We, you know, can't really see like the muscle structure and everything that, that's happening here. So, You'll draw the shape of your shorts, and then you can just go over those with a nice diagonal line to fill in the value that you're seeing there. My 
seven-year-old is doing sneaky things behind me right now. Not very sneaky. He was getting himself a snack, but he was being cute about it. Okay. Um, all right. So we got that shadow, and then we've got across the whole shorts. We'll just fill all that in. Then we've got this big shadow across the uh, right arm or Demetrius's left arm. So you're just finding this shape of the shadow across your stick figure that's drawn nice and light. So you can erase it. That's exactly how I, I sketched this form. You just can't see my stick figure because it was so light that I erased it. Okay, and then we can find a little bit of like an organic shape here to outline the, uh, the chest hair that we're seeing and like the collarbone. And then the, the nipples and there's a shape of a shadow here across the torso, this organic shape. And then we're following the contours and the curve of the torso, how it rounds around this. Yeah, if any of this is like really confusing, hopefully for those watching later on YouTube, since I know there's only a couple of us in the class now, think about you know what the vertical and horizontal axis of the contours are doing. Like we've got a cylinder here on the torso. So we've got roundness on the horizontal axis and then more of straight lines or lines that follow you know what the side body is doing here on the, the vertical axis so think about that curve that that's happening as you're adding this value in and when i do uh figure drawing classes i'm always going directly to what the light is doing. If I only have a couple minutes to, to draw a figure and a gesture sketch, rather than uh, trying to put any details in, I look for what that stick figure shape is, and then I just build value on top of that. Right, and then moving back down here to the legs, we've got this big shadow across the whole leg, and that really informs the shadows around the kneecap and helps us locate the kneecaps by just looking at what the, the shapes of the, the shadows are doing. And I'm just filling that in with that, that diagonal hatching line or a soft tonal value as I go. Okay, and then same thing with the feet. Go ahead and jump over here to this other one. And I'm looking at what the the values doing. There's a very organic shape right there. There's a big shadow along the inner side of the, the leg here. And then again, that informs where the kneecap is looking at the value there. A little crescent moon shape there on the kneecap. And then you can really see how this value is wrapping around the cylinder shape of the leg there too. All right, I think that's all the, the biggest shadows that I'm seeing in, in that form. And then if you wanted to add, you know, some of the hair shape up here, I'm looking for the the shape of the hair and going right up to that line on the, the crown of the head. And then I guess I did put a little bit of the ears in there and I got the bone structure of the head to be a little bit more like the bone structure that I'm seeing on Demetrius's head. And it helps me to do that curved line where the eye line is and then we can even go ahead and add like the curved line for the nose curved line for the lips and then maybe we'll just shade a little bit onto there with the eyes and the eyebrows and everything needs to follow that curve so 
that is it for our basic body proportions here and adding value to them. And hopefully um, the folks who missed out tonight can watch the recording later on YouTube. Um, I know we only have a couple of you here. I'm so used to having so many interruptions in a class like this too. It's so weird. I kind of budgeted my, my time uh, based on, you know, expecting interruptions. Um, well, of the, the two of you who are here in the class, do you want to hold up your sketches from tonight and show us what you did? I know both of you have your screens off, so I don't want to pressure you to do that if you don't want to. All right, Chanel can spotlight you. Wonderful. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so it looks like the hands need to come down a little lower. You wanna get that fourth um, head length to be in line with the wrist. So sometimes it's like counterintuitive. We wanna end the hands in a certain place, but you wanna get those wrist joints down at the bottom of the, the fourth head length and then everything should line up right there. But that value is, is really nice. Thank you for sharing so much. Okay, and our other person uh, doesn't want to share. That's fine. Uh, okay, how much time do we have left? We've still got six minutes. Well, I can uh, jump ahead and uh, talk a little bit more about um, gesture uh, sketching and um, capturing movement. And I'm pretty sure that I included the... Um, the reference photos for the, the, the classes next week with the, the crouching figure. Um, I'm pretty sure that it was included along with um, with these references. It is. I did, okay. Okay, well then, yeah, let's go ahead and jump ahead a little bit and, and look at what we're doing next week. And then we'll just have a little preview of next week in tonight's class. Okay, so didn't send it to the iPad, but I, I've got it here on my phone. Let me switch, switch back. So tabletop view. All right, so we've got this crouching figure now. So um, the way that we're going to warm up and we can maybe, you know, repeat this next week too. Let me find a blank page. My son thinks he's so funny. He just snuck back under my desk and just grabbed a pencil off of my desk for no apparent reason. Pretty adorable. Uh, but also, I was about to use that pencil. <laughs> just grab a different one. Okay, so I've got a 3B pencil here. So I'm just going to show you how, like, if I was in a life drawing class and Demetrius was, you know, this was a gesture pose and I had two minutes on the clock to sketch his figure like this, this is how I would approach it. I would, first of all, I would try to find the lollipop uh, stick figure. So just the, the head. So sketch the, the round circle or oval shape, whatever you wanna do. We're not worried about it being perfect right now. And then we wanna find the center movement or center line of gravity, which, you know, if he was standing would be a nice long line, but since he's uh, so crouched like this, it's really more of like this down to the, the, that knee right there. So that's it, that's the little lollipop. I'm seeing like this line and then it kind of goes down like through the arm and then to the knee, all right? And then from that, I'm gonna build on that and I'm gonna look for these circles of like the, the shoulders, right? And where do those circles fall in relationship to the head? And immediately I have already put them up. Uh, I put them lower than the head because I'm thinking shoulders are below the head, right? But when I look a little closer, I see that his shoulders are very much in line with, you know, his shoulders are going like behind the ears right there. 
and it's more like his chin line that the center of those circles are lining up. So we've got something more like that there. And then we've got the hand. So we're just looking at the basic shapes that we're seeing here. So the hands, and then we've got the biceps, and then we've got the elbow joint right here to connect that. And then find the other elbow. It should be pretty in line with this elbow. So we can draw a little line to connect that. Okay. And then I'm just going to do another line down to meet this point because it's very much in line. Like the knee is very much in line with what this hand is doing. And I'm going to use the wrist there to connect to the, the hand. And then this is where all that foreshortening is happening, but we're not worried about that right now. We've got just a big black mass for those shorts anyway. We got a heavy shadow right here. So we'll just kind of jump ahead and fill in what some of the, the value is doing. We've got like the value for the head and the uh, value for the hair a little bit. And I'm using the side of my pencil and I'm just being real general right now, just trying to find this gesture. And I'm sure we're already over two minutes right now. Um, all right, and then looking to the relationship of this knee to the rest of the figure, the knee is way over here, kind of by the shoulder. And then where is the foot in reference to everything else? And it's about right there. So that's just my very general gesture, which is probably gonna need a lot of work uh, as we build on it next week. But then I wanna do that really quickly over here. So just, really quick because the slowing it down is what makes it kind of get a little wonky for me, honestly. So like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, like boom. That's what we're looking for. We're trying to find like a quick movement gesture of what, what the form is doing. Okay, so something like that. That's what we'll, we'll start out with next week is just trying to find the weight and the movement really quickly in that uh, that crouching figure. And then we'll build on that to find the proportions. We're also gonna use neg some negative space to help us along. We're gonna you know, draw on a printout of the photo. So we'll have a few other uh, things in place to, to help us with that. Cause I know it's definitely a tricky pose. Okay, uh, thank you all two of you who were able to join us tonight and um, Hope to see you next week. Have a great night. Thanks.